Juan Carlos Ruiz is a software engineer, community leader and mentor that loves knowledge sharing and teamwork. He is a part of Easy Broker product team, a multiple listing service that helps real estate agents to provide the best experience finding a home. He has been participating in different technological communities, trying to help others to accelerate their careers in engineering and software development. He has participated as a mentor in the International Ruby Me 2019 program, helping others to build a professional development experience working on, uh, on <laughs> an open source project. A truly good guy. Ruby is a flexible language that allows us to write expressive and maintainable code. However, Sometimes it could be necessary to work with a low-level language looking for better performance. In this talk, Juan Carlos is going to show us how to use Ruby to create an interface for compiled languages like C. And if you have any questions, please open the stream on the left side panel and leave them to the stream chat and we'll get back to you later. Juan Carlos, please, it's your turn. Thank you. Okay, first of all, hi everyone. Welcome to my talk, Going Native with FFI. Uh, give me a second. Uh, uh, my name is Juan Carlos Ruiz, and I'm super excited to be here. This is my first talk in English, so I'm also in a, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, currently, I'm working on Easy Broker, and um, I'm working remotely from 2013. So I started before it got cool, you know, and I love the open source. I really like to contribute to the communities and create new features for for all. <clears throat> I'm presenting this talk from Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. This is a picture from one of the monuments of my city. And today I'm going to talk to you about how Ruby can work with C language. And I feel a little, a little bit like Milhouse trying to show his emotion about the old fox. The reason for this is because C was the first language that I learned in college about 12 years ago. And although currently I'm not using Nick Professional, uh, this language gave me fundamentals to advance in my professional career. Now, what are the options we have to manage native code in Ruby? The first option is MKMF. MKMF is used by Ruby C extensions to generate a make file which will correctly compile and link the C extension to Ruby and a third party library. And how is this? Having a C library and wrapping it with more C code and a little Ruby to generate the make file. We get a bundle file. And we can use this bundle inside a Ruby model. Let's jump to the console to try this. I have here a, a little project created with a C extension. Let's see what is inside the C extension. I'm going to open Beam X. And inside Beam X, I'm going to open Larry Edge and Larry C. As you can see, the the C library is very little. Uh, these are two super simple functions. The first function, hello from library, takes a name variable and only prints hello and the variable. And the second method takes a number and it returns the square of this number. Now let's see the code to grab this, this library. Uh, the code is inside x and my Ruby x. Uh, okay, as you can see here, this is the code that we need to use to grab the extension. We need to import the Ruby Edge library and create new functions to grab the existing functions in the library. If we compare the code to grab the, the extension is more than the real extensions. And if we talk about the Ruby code, This is all the Ruby code that we need to create extension. And after compile it, we have a little bundle file. And this fi file can be used 
inside a Ruby model. We can call my helpers, that is the namespace that I define it in the C library, in the C wrap, and the method C hello and C square. And I'm wrapping all, I'm wrapping again these methods inside the model with self hello and self square. Mm, let's open the Avin console to test this. Inside this console, I can use my rubyx.hello and send a parameter and a string. In my case, I see rgnit. And we can see hello and the parameter that I sent. Also, if I call my rubyx.square and a number, I can get the result. And both functions were called from the C library. Let's back to the presentation. Uh, the pros of this approach are we can use C functions in a, in a Ruby code, and we take advantage of the, of the existing Ruby Edge library to create the extension. And the cons are we need to ask extra C code to create the bindings, and this solution only works on MRI. The, the other option that we have is to use FFI. FFI stands for Foreign Function Interface and is a mechanism by which a program written in one programming language can coroutines or make use of services written in another. How is this? This is an example taken from the FFI gem documentation. And as you can see here, you only need to import the FFI gem, extend your model with FFI library, import the library that you want to use. In this case, we are importing the standard C library is this FFI lib C. We need to attach the function that we, that we want to port. In this case, it's puts. This is the puts from the C code. And finally, in the last line, we can see how the method is used. I'm calling my lib. That is the model that grabs the, the C extension, puts, and the, the, method, the parameter that I'm sent to puts. The pros of this approach are we don't need to add additional C code and an FFI extension is multi-platform multi and multi-implementation. The cons are complex macros are difficult to maintain, although simple constants can be redefined in Ruby, more elaborate and more elaborate macros could be counterproductive to pour them from language. And the same case for callback functions. And well, from here, I want to show you an example about how to use the FFI gem to, to encapsulate a C library. For this, I decided to make a very simple implementation with PGM images. In summary, a PGM image is a grayscale image commonly stored in a plain text. The structure is the following. A magic number for identifying the file type, in this case is P2. The width and height, in this case 24 and 7, the maximum gray value, for this example, the maximum gray value is 15. And 15 represents, um, represents white and zero represents black. And everything between are gray scales. And finally, the next lines represent the image pixels. For example, here, this is the plain text value of the image, and this is the result. Obviously, it's a very little image. I'm uh, I augmented, augmented the scale of the image to for the presentation, but it's is the uh, this is the um, the structure. Now this is the content of the PGM header implemented in C. The file has the structure that represents the file content and four methods which pass pass the data by reference. Here is the struct that represents the image. And we have four methods here, load PGM, set PGM, free PGM, and invert colors. That is the method that we'll show in this presentation. Once we have the library implementation, we need to compile it to get the shared, li the shared library. The shared library has the SO extension. And now that we have the SO library, the shared library, we are able to, the, to add the, the path in our model that extends from FFI library. In this case, I have base FFI lib and the lib path that I define it here. It's a little bit long, but it works. 
also we need to add a PGM class that inherits from FFI struct. And this class is in charge to map the image struct defined in the C library. And here is a comparison. As you can see, its data type is data type defined in C struct is now represented in the Ruby class. We move the char the char pointer magic number to a string. The integers are also defined in the class, and this double pointer image is not an image pointer. In the same way, we need to do the function attachment. Each function that you want to use from the C library should be called using the FFI attach function, is this. And the first parameter is the name of the function in Ruby. The second parameter is the name of the function in the C library. The third parameter is an array with the parameters that we need to send to the to the function. And finally, the fourth parameter is what our function going to return. In this case, all the functions return byte because the, I'm, I'm passing by reference the, the image. So I'm going to update the values inside the in, in the same variable that I send in as parameter. Here you can, you can see the difference between the original function declarations versus the function attach, attachment in Ruby. It's pretty simple. And let's see how this works on my console. Open sample. In my example folder, I have this image. It's a, a photo from Saturn, I guess. And if I open this file, we can see that it's plain text. It's the same like the FIP example. Hmm. Now let's open a bin console with the library loaded. And the first thing that I am going to do is to create two instances, one for the in image and one from the for the out image. So I'm going to do pgm equal pgm bindings strokes pgm dot new and an instance for the out image pgm out equal pgm bindings strokes pgm new and now we need to load the image on the pgm instance for this we need to call the load pgm method i'm going to do pgm functions dot load pgm and the first parameter is the pgm instance that i'm going to use to sh to save the the image in memory and the path to the image in this case is dot slash example slash in dot pgm and it's loaded now to apply the color inverting one moment sorry oh no to apply the color inverting i'm going to call the invert colors function for this, I'm going to do pgm functions invert colors pgm and pgm out. And we need to save in this the, the output. For this, we will call, P, we'll call pgm functions dot save pgm and we will send pgm out plus the output path in this case example slash out dot pgm and let's see in our disk here is the output image as you can see we are using the c library that we define it uh, the implementation is inside the X directory similar to the MK implementation. And here we have a PGM include and the implementation of the code. This code is the DC code in, in charge to perform the, the invert colors and load the image. 
and we are using it inside clip in the models defined here in bindings and functions. Here in, in functions, in the function model, we have the attachments. In the strokes model, we have the stroke, the stroke mapping. And we, can, and we have seen how this works. Uh, let's continue. And that's it. We have successfully used our compiled PGMC library in a Ruby code. In conclusion, use MKMF when you need total control of your C code. You are wrapping a little library, or you don't need to target other Ruby versions besides MRI. Or use FFI if you don't want to write C code to create the bindings. You have a C project in another repository, or you want to use a third party library. And also, this approach is useful if you want to target other Ruby versions besides MRI. If you want to play with these examples, the code is available in my GitHub account. Mm. And that's it. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. If you want to chat, you can find me as JuanCRG90 in social networks. And thanks. I'm going to stop the. Sure. Ready. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Let's see what we have in our chat. Just a moment. Sure. What we can see here. Um, yes, the audience have a, had a little bit problems with the uh, uh, with the text. So don't worry about that. We are going to send the recording of this talk as any other talks, probably next week or week after that. So you can see the whole whole presentation again and a little bit uh, closer the screen. Ah, uh, there's a lots of <laughs> lots of. Can you see the ch chat yourself? There's a lots of uploads going <laughs> on you, and thank yous for you. Thank you. It was a wonderful demo and presentation. And there's also a little conversation about the Leo and Vito is having a good comments on that yes now how often do you need to write code using ffi yourself in your day job uh, currently i'm not using it in my day job it is i started to, uh, to experiment with these kind of libraries uh, for hobby i started to to play with FFI, and after that, I moved to WebAssembly that started to get some impact in the community about three years ago. Uh, but currently, I haven't had the opportunity to to use this in my day-to-day -day job. I'm still looking for the opportunity. I'm really interested about this, your community uh, uh, work. Is this something that we can shortly talk about? Would you like to tell about the, what your community does and why you do the community work and feel free sure. to tell us and be an inspiring example? Sure. Uh, currently, I have a little community with some friends here in Mexico called Calzada Code. And we, currently, with the pandemic, uh, we are we are only making some online events uh, to present some talks uh, in, about general topics uh, related with tech, not only Ruby. Mm, before that, uh, we used to to make the, to make the meeting meet up in in a little bar in the city with uh, you know people contact human <laughs> human contact. But now it's all online. Uh, before that, I participated in other communities, also local, and I had in, 20, in 2019 the opportunity to participate in, in Ruby Me, in Ruby Me by Ruby Together, uh, helping a, a, a mentee to to learn more about the open source, create uh, taking some some issues from open source projects and sending some pull requests and creating new features for these for these projects. Mm, and also, I I love to have the local hackathons. Uh, we have 
uh, here in Mexico, the the, techno the tech ecosystem is, is still in developing, it's, it's still growing. So it's very important for me that the new generations learn more about how they came to contribute to the global community. And they learn that this, this kind of these kind of communities are so important for them and they can to contribute an impact global. Yeah. So this should be an example to everybody since as my work, I also see how great impact a leaders like Juan Carlos in community makes into people's life. So this is a really important work and I'd like to thank you for all your community work that you are doing. We are having uh, one new question here. If you are using FFI in your gem, should you bundle the source library in the gem? Mm, in my in my test, I have bundled the source. Uh, currently, I haven't tried it to to get the the source from another place, but it, this should be valid. You could use a, a Git sub module, maybe. And get the and get this model in and get this model uh, with a Ruby command or maybe a Bash command before you start to compile it. You need to compile the extension to the architecture of your co computer, so it's important to get the source code, the C source code in your your machine before you start to use it. There's one comment in in stream chat. Oh, sure, FFI as a hobby. Juan Carlos is making us lesser ones look lazy. <laughs> Thank you for the talk and obvious pressures also. Uh, one question here also. A long time ago, I heard that using C objects in Ruby might lead to GC not being able to re release them. Is it a problem with the FFI or MKMF? Are there some ways to avoid it? Mm, I have understand that in the case of MKMF, you need to handle of the memory uh, by by your hand in your C grab. Mm, in the case of FFI, I read something about that you that, that FFI helped you to with the garbage collection, but I'm not totally sure what is the level of the of the, yep. um, I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, what is the level that FFI helps in this in this task? I'm not sure if with uh, with memory leaks you need to do do something additional. When I started to 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 practicing with this, I my first concern was I'm not, I'm not using the free 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 PGM image in my code that I need to use it directly when I I'm working with C. So I and maybe I need to investigate a little bit more, but I understand that FFI makes makes more of the work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos. And as said, you are going to receive all the recordings on next week or maybe after that. So hope to see you, Juan Carlos, in stream. Thank chat you. or uh, Discord later also so we can continue the discussion around this topic.